Hello golfers, welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for pursuing golf excellence. Today's lesson is about how to make sense of the nonsense of what that stupid little ball is doing out there to you, on you, and frankly, because of you. So let's get after it. We're gonna use TrackMan, which is a wonderful device if you've not been living under a rock, you know what it is. It's all over the tours. It's a great, great learning aid and analysis aid. And uh, we're gonna use its cool software to help understand how to make sense of the nonsense. Now remember, every golf shot you hit, every golf shot you've ever hit is perfect. No matter how sucky that golf ball went, you did exactly the right thing with the club to cause that thing to happen. So remember, golf ball's got a job, go to the target. Golf club's got a job, hit it there. You have a job, swing the golf club. In fact, most golfers are trying to hit the ball, but we know that would hurt a lot. We don't try to hit the ball. We try to swing the club. Now, if I swing this golf club in the right direction at the right elevation, guess what? I'm gonna hit the golf ball. If I get the club face pointed the right way, guess what? I'm gonna like where it goes after I've hit it. And I need you to think about this. I've just hit five, looks like completely random golf shots out there. That's what we're gonna analyze today, what those balls just did. I need you to think about this. Instead of thinking, what's wrong with myself? Instead of thinking, oh God, you suck. You don't necessarily suck, but you didn't apply the club properly. But folks, what are you thinking about? You're over there thinking about where your elbow is, where your hips are, trying to get, well, all this. Thank goodness for the internet, because it has made my business blossom. You've got too much crap in your head about how to swing, and you're not paying attention to doing your job, which is to swing the golf club and let the damn ball just get in the way. In fact, if you're not hitting the ball solid, folks on the golf ball is not gonna help anyway, right? If you're not hitting the ball solid, your club's not hitting the ground in the right spot. Ah, that begins to talk about the critical factors, okay? Now, the critical factors in golf, the absolute facts, you're not gonna get away from it, are you gotta hit the ball solid, predict the flight, and hit it far enough to score. Those are the facts. All the other stuff that you've heard traveling around the internet are swing style things that are in vogue, out of vogue, uh, not skills, okay? The skills, these two things. So now when you're looking at your golf ball flight, you look out there and go, what is wrong with you? And you look at your golf club and you go, how could you do that to me? And here's what's going to happen. We're going to take one shot at a time. I'm going to show you some cool video. And let's see what we can learn. Alrighty, folks. Here's our first shot. Now, you can see that it took off a little bit left of the center line. There's a little faint line going right at the center of the screen. That's zero straight. Left of that will be in the negatives and right of that would be in the positives, as you'll see in just a second. So we're gonna to try to figure out if you didn't have any equipment out there, what would you do? Well, we've gotta understand first things first, did I hit it solid? Did I hit this thing solid or not? Second thing, which way did it take off? And now this is important. The takeoff of your golf ball is terribly dependent on your club face angle. And we like to say it's all about the face. So the club face angle is largely responsible for the takeoff direction of your shots. Certainly, if that club face is pointed to the right, you can't imagine the ball is going to take off to the left. How, how could that be if my club face is pointed over that way? In fact, even if, even if I swing, left, but the face is pointed right, guess what? Still can take off to the right. So the ball takes off close to the face angle. Rule number one. Rule number two, 
it curves whenever there's a difference between the face and the path. Those are pretty much the only rules. Contact, takeoff, curve. Please, 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 please keep it in those terms. Contact, fat, thin, high toe, a heel, low, dead flush in the center, and the old shankopotamus. Face angle is either left, right, or straight. Path is either left, right, or straight. That's all there is to it. Don't get too excited. There's only three ball flights. Balls that curve right, balls that curve left, balls that don't curve. Whether they're oriented to the right or left doesn't really matter. Those are the laws. So let's take a look at this one. Now, we just talked about ball takes off toward the face angle. So we know that this club face had to be to the left, okay? And it curved hard to the left. So we also know that there was a big difference. The path had to be going way out to the right of that face. But this shot, I cannot tell you how many golfers, even very good golfers, would go, I came right over the top on that shot. Well, let's have a look at the data. When we look at this, we go straight in our order. I've put the numbers up just the way that we would have them to make sense of this. And don't worry about club speed. Club speed is your club speed. This is not a club speed golf lesson. The low point distribution, low point. Low point is not a low point in your career, folks. It is where the club bottomed out, okay? And since we're hitting an iron from the turf, okay, fine, fake turf. The low point with any club where the ball's on the ground unless we're in a bunker, should be after contact. And TrackMan says 2.3 inches after ball contact is where I bottomed out. So A+, plus, solid in that respect. But there's a second issue in solid, and that is uh, largely explained by smash factor. Smash factor is the ball speed divided by the club speed. And a driver, for instance, a 1.49 smash factor is very, very flush. In this case, I had a 1.40 smash on a seven iron, which is pretty darn flush. Over 1.4, nice. So I have met the requirements for solid contact right off the bat. Isn't that fun? Therefore, I get to go, okay, what the heck happened then? I hit it solid, because by the way, if I had chunked that a little bit, okay, if I just hit the ground a little bit, it can make the heel hit the ground first and the toe close, and it's easy to hit that shot. But my smash factor would be down there in the low 1.3s or worse. Okay, so we've hit it solid. Therefore, we get to go to the next part. And it launched 1.8 degrees to the left. So we're going to call that one degree. Folks, we're not going to split hairs with the degrees. Well, tenths of degrees. So it launched one degree left, and the face angle was three degrees left. Now, you will recall that the ball does not take off exactly toward the face. It's between the face and the path, but way heavier toward the face, as you will see. It curved 85 feet left. That's a bunch of curves. That's a bubba shot right there, folks. But guess what? You're going to need this shot at some point in your golf career. You're going to need to be able to bend it like Beckham. And by the way, at the end of this video, you're going to have your homework where we will discuss hitting these shots. Well, we won't discuss it. You'll be out there trying to do it. Now, why did it curve so far? Well, the club path was nine degrees to the right. Wow. Remember, positive to the right of that center line. Nine degrees to the right, but it looks like it came over the top. And you might even argue with me, as some have in my original, before TrackMan uh, days, uh, I had a video up there and it got all around the world, which is really, really cool. But people would argue that it's the wrong ball flight laws. Well, we're going to see something in a second that uh, will hopefully change the people's mind. So it curved 85 feet left. Club path was 9.2 to the right. Looks like it came over the top. But the reason it looks like that is because the face was closed, just a degree. But there was a 12 and a half degree difference between the face and the path. And folks, uh, under two degrees difference is cool with you. But 12 is a whole bunch of curve. It carried 146 yards and finished 91 feet to the left. So let's have a quick peek at how this looks 
in terms of track man. Okay, the blue line is the club path. The white line is the target line. The orange line is the flight of the golf ball. It was white on the other screen, but it's orange in here. The black curve is that crazy. Look at that. I actually curved it off the screen. That's cool. And the red is the club face. So target, path, face, ball, shadow of the ball. Okay, here it comes. This club, and for future purposes, remember this. This is the target line. Everything on this side of the line is inside it. Everything on this side is outside it. Now you know what inside out means. Most people have heard it, but don't know what it means. From going inside out to the target line. Now clearly, folks, you see that that club path was headed to the right, right? We can't argue that. And by the way, it actually almost got all the way out to the right of that line, which is a shank waiting to happen. And you can see it didn't take off exactly in the club face, but it's taking off way closer to the face angle arrow than the path. Does that make sense? And that giant difference face to path is why that baby hooked so bad. So we know that big curve has a big difference face to path. Well, here's one with damn near no curve at all. We call this painting the target line. That ball went right up the target line and fell right back down on it. That is a straight golf ball. So how do you think that happened? Big difference, big curve, no difference, no curve. Hopefully you're already saying, ha ha, Dunnigan, your face and path were going terribly close to each other when the ball left. Let's take a look. We have a low point distribution, four and a half almost inches after ball contact. That's good. We have a smash factor, 1.44. I flushed that golf ball. Oh, I love it. It launched one degree to the right because the face angle was one degree to the right. Now you'll notice we have very little difference between the club path and the club face, so we see a curve of one whole foot. The club face, 0.7, club path, 0.6, face to path, wait a minute, that doesn't add up. 0.2 isn't the difference between 0.6 and 0.7. Well, we have some rounding going on, no problem. Hardly curved at all, it went 165 yards, and finished 7.5 feet to the right of the target. Folks, that's about as straight as the old coach can hit a golf ball right there. Okay, let's take a look at the club delivery video. As you might expect, the white line is being covered by the blue line, and so is the red line. Got the path, the face, and there's the golf ball, and here that baby comes. Now, wait a minute, this, this is a dead straight club delivery, but look, it's coming from the inside of the target line first. Out to it, and right back around again. And that is straight. Okay, here we have a nice little draw. Took off to the right of the target. Now, draws that take off to the right of the target are good. Draws that take off left of the target, no bueno. Fades that take off left, good. Fades that take off right, no bueno. In this case, we know that, okay, hold on, before I give you the answer, what are you thinking now? Was it solid? Okay, I'm going to hit the ball solid almost all the time. Okay, so I'm going to tell you it was pretty darn solid. Which way did it take off? A little to the right. What do you think the club face had to have been? It's physics, folks. It curved a little bit to the left, but not a ton. What do you think the path was relative to the club face? Okay, here we have some facts. The low point, 3.5 inches after ball contact. Lovely. The smash factor, 1.45. Oh my goodness, I flushed a poop out of that one. The launch direction was two and a half degrees to the right. All right, all right, cool. Now, why did it launch to the right? Because the face angle was slightly rightly. It curved back to the left. The club path was even righter. 
So we had the face to the right, the path was even righter. Right and righter. The face was one degree left of the path. Hopefully you can make that out. There's a little bit of sunlight coming in. The face was just one degree left of the path. Not a lot of difference, not a lot of curve. It carried 170 and finished 11 and a half feet to the right. Folks, I gotta tell you, with a 170 yard shot, think about this, the rule of 5%. If your golf ball ends up 5% of the distance you are from the hole with a full swing, that's PGA Tour stuff. I'll take that one all day. All right, let's take a look at the club delivery. Okay, here's our target line. The club is coming from the inside. Okay, the path and face have very little difference. Therefore, there is very little curve. Here it comes. That's the draw, slightly from the inside. You know, the interesting thing to think about is that uh, this is three degrees of path, and that is one half of one tick of the clock face. Inside out. And by the way, inside out does not mean inside out to the right of this target line. It's from the inside, and it went right along the target line. I hope that makes sense. Uh, swinging out to right field is not a good idea. It's a bad concept because you really don't want to get out to the right of that target line unless you enjoy hitting the occasional shank. Here we have a shot. Well, this is no good at all, isn't it? It took off right and curved righter. So it took off off the target line and curved even farther away. This is how you miss it right of the green side bunker, folks. Hopefully now you have an idea and you're already thinking, I have the answer to this, Dunnigan. It took off to the right. Hmm. Curved rider. Hmm. We know, we know that the face was to the right of the path because it curved to the right. We know that the face was to the right of the target line because it took off right. And folks, rest assured, it was solid. Let's look at some data. Low point, three inches after ball contact. Smash factor, 1.42. Check off solid, folks. It's good. Launch direction was three and a half to the right. And if you were guessing that that club face had to be close to that as well, you would be correct because it's four degrees to the right. It doesn't launch exactly toward the face. It's between the face and the path, but way heavier toward the face. All right, it didn't curve a ton. 16 feet to the right is not a ton of curve. And it curved because the club path was two degrees while the face angle was four degrees. So we have a 2.1 face to the right of the path. Now remember, positives are right, negatives are left. So face relative to the path is two degrees right of it. It's got a curve right, folks. That's all there is to it. Carried 160, finished 15 yards to the right. You know, hopefully that catches a piece of the green, but folks, that's a lot of rightness right there, depending on what we're looking up at the green. This golf club came from the inside. No, I didn't. I didn't come over and slice it. That's a draw path, folks. What? Slight draw, by the way, almost straight ball path, but because the face was to the right of that blue path, guess what? That's going to curve to the right. I love that shadow. That's so cool. Trackman has done a wonderful thing with this technology. Face was to the right. Path was to the right, but the face was even more to the right of our target line. That's how to hit a fade, a push fade, by the way, a push fade. All right, one more, if you don't mind. Okay, finally, in this case, we have a proper fade. Remember, and this is one of the ones that's really hard to believe, but it's actually, well, true, you'll see. The ball took off to the left and curved back to the right. The ball took off to the left because the face was what? Left. But it curved back to the right because the path was left-er. Yes, you don't hit a fade with an open face. In fact, folks, how come if I aim to the left, I'm open, but if I point my face to the left, it's closed? 
let's just stick to calling right, right, and left, left, and straight, straight. I think the whole world will be better off for it. Well, in this case, the ball took off left, curved left, curved left to right. What do you think? Can you see this now? If you saw this shot, can you see this? How that, how you absolutely did everything right to hit a golf ball with that flight. Checking things off, 2.5 after contact, low point, yay. 1.41 smash, yay, solid. It launched four degrees to the left, folks. Four degrees to the left. Hmm, now why would that sucker launch four degrees to the left? Because the face angle was three and a half to the left. Not exact, but close. Now, it curved 21 feet to the right. Not a ton of curve. Curved to the right because the club path was even lefter of the club face. So in this case, the face was almost three degrees right of the path. That's the face being left, but to the right of the path. Okay, finished 160 yards, 13 and a half feet to the left of the target. It was just like my draw I showed you. It's curving toward the target, which is a beautiful thing. Curve balls that curve toward the target are wonderful. Curve balls that curve away from the target, kind of sucky. Now, homework assignment. I need you to go out on that golf course. I'd like you to take an, one of those alignment sticks or driveway marking sticks and put it out there just like you see that white center line. I want you to put it out there about 10 to 15 feet away from you, okay? Line your golf ball up, so I want you to make a strip divot. All right, I want you to line up that ball with that stick, and I want you to try to go around the stick this way. I don't care how far this sucker curves. It's okay when you're learning this. If your ball curves off the planet, great, especially if it curved the way you wanted. We're not trying to fine-tune the curve yet, unless you are ready for that. We're trying to get it to curve. If right now you don't know which way it's going, get it to curve a lot. If you're pretty good, start refining it down. And this is called shrinking the bandwidth. So we might start with, okay, I'm going to give you a 50-yard wide fairway to curve the ball into. Fine. Then as you get better, get down 25 yards, 20, 10, 5, okay? You'll get better fast if you just do it. I got one favor. With the draws and the overdraws, the hooks, I'd like you to aim pretty darn straight. If you're hitting the fade, you may aim a little bit to the left. But generally speaking, I'm not looking for setup adjustments at first. I'm looking for you to control this trusty little weapon of yours. Okay, I can have the golf club, so I'm going to go around the the stick to the right, curve it back to the left. I'm feeling how my club face is. I've, I'm more, I'm going back more open. Okay, that's more to the right. It might come down more to the right. More closed, more left. Fool around with it. I can, I'm working the club shaft. I'm putting the twist on it. We'll have an entire golf lesson on the work you can apply to your club shaft. Okay, play with it. I need you to feel this. If you go, do this with your golf club, put it on your finger, just let it flip around. You will feel this weight go clunk. I need you to feel the weight on the end of the stick because if you can't feel this, how can you tell it where to go? Folks, we shall call it a day for today. You've got some work to do. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to compress that like button. Subscribe so that you don't miss any more videos. I'm going to be putting a lot of these things up here to help you with your game. Hit that little notification bell down there on the lower right-hand side and that way you'll know as soon as I upload anything. Hit the comment section. If you like it, fine. If you don't like it, fine. I will do my best to respond, although I am terribly busy, but I will do it. Also, if you have things that you'd like to see, I'm going to be doing so many of these for you. Please check it out. And down there, the first thing is a link that is to a ball flight PDF that has a test in it too. See what you know. Okay, get to it and let's get after it.